Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm checking out the Savage Model 25 Varmeter in 1.7 Hornet. So as most of you know, if you follow me on Facebook, um, I had a bit of trouble in actually getting ammunition for this. So it just goes to show how popular the cartridge is already here in Australia. But anyhow, I finally got some ammo for it, so I'm finally able to do the review. So uh, my apologies on the delayed review with this one. Just taking a look at what comes with the rifle, you've got the uh, manual. Also a trigger lock, a set of uh, earplugs there, and just some other uh, advertising material there from Savage. Now the rifle itself, uh, as I say, it is a uh, varmint rifle, so it is, you know, reasonably hefty, um, eight and a quarter pounds or uh, approximately 3.75 kilo. So it's not the sort of rifle once you put a scope on that you're really going to be just, you know, shooting off the shoulder out in the field. It is uh, more, you know, designed for that long distance uh, tack driving and, uh, you know, shooting varmints. So that's why I put a uh, Harris bipod on the front of it here. Uh, that's my own. I just thought I'd throw that on for the purpose of the review. So I'll just give you a scan of the rifle so you can see it all. Naturally, you're going to see it later on in the review, but just to show you here. Got a uh, rubber kick pad at the back there. Not that you really need it for a 1.7 Hornet. Also got a uh, sling stud. As you can see, it's a beautiful wooden uh, laminate stock. Really nice finish to it. I was, I was actually quite impressed the first time I, you know, unboxed this. So as you can see, the barrel's fairly, um, you know, a, a, well, a heavy contour anyway to it. It's uh, 24 inches in length and uh, has a one in nine twist rate. So you can see that the actual um, uh, steel or the uh, metal finish on this is actually a satin blue. So it's just quite a nice look. I actually quite like the look of the rifle in general. Now just running through uh, a few more things that it comes standard with on, on the specs anyway. Uh, the bases are weaver style bases. They come free with the rifle. Uh, you, you don't have to buy them. So all you need is some rings and obviously a um, optic. You've got a uh, four shot detachable polymer magazine here. So I mean that's as tough as nails. Also uh, come standard with the AccuTrigger, like uh, a lot of Savage uh, rifles now, they have the AccuTrigger. Uh, for those of you who really don't know much about it, basically uh, it's almost like a two-stage trigger. You've got to take up the slack on the uh, safety in the middle of the trigger blade there. And once that's depressed and then you actually you can actually fire it, it, it breaks at a crisp, I think it was just under three pounds for my measurement. So, yeah, really quite nice. Um, excellent for long range shooting anyway. Now the bolt itself, uh, just I'll take that out. Just hold on to the trigger and pull it out the back and it'll come straight out. Now it's a, you've got three locking lugs at the front there, so you know nothing too special about that. Just to put it back in, you've just got to pull the trigger and then it just slides straight in. Okay, so you've got your safety um, here. It's just a toggle on the side, so pull back on it. Safety works, so you can take up that first stage of the trigger, so to speak, but can't actually fire it. So I'll just uh, dry fire it now. I'll bring it up to the camera, and you can just see it. It's really a, quite a crisp uh, trigger. So yeah, it breaks really nicely. The actual optic I put on top too, guys, uh, this is a uh, bit of a odd one from uh, left field. It's actually a ballistic reticle for uh, the 2 to 3 Remington for the 55 grain pill. So it's actually got bullet drop compensators um, on the reticle. So a lot of you might be thinking, well, why the hell have I gone and done that? Well, actually, um, they say that the 1.7 Hornet with the 20 grain projectile is um, ballistically, uh, well, I should say trajectory, is identical to that of the 2 to 3 with the 55 grain pill. So that's why I decided to get the uh, scope on it. So it's a weaver scope. So uh, quite a nice finish to it, made in Japan as well, so um, I'm pretty hopeful that it'll be a good optic. Uh, 4 to 16 by 42 is the actual specs on it, and you've got your uh, actual adjustments at the front here for your distances, your focus, so the front focus. So yeah, really quite a nice scope, and I think it'd be well suited uh, to this rifle in particular. Now, what else can I tell you about the rifle before we go out and use it? Um, just a little bit about uh, warranties and things like that. Um, it comes with a 12 month warranty, so Niowa, they're the importers here in Australia, but naturally you can order one of these through your local dealer. Uh, price wise, you're looking around the $900 mark, so 
you know, look, it's not an ultra expensive rifle. Uh, certainly isn't that. It's quite an entry level uh, priced rifle. But uh, what I find with a lot of Savage rifles is, uh, you know, they're very accurate, um, especially, you know, for their price. So I'm, I'm actually expecting quite a bit from this rifle. So how about, I won't hold it up anymore, guys. Let's get out and uh, sight this rifle in and uh, just show you what it's made of. All right, guys, so what I'll do just to start off with, I've sort of so-so got it sighted in at 100. So what I've done is I've just put up a fresh target there and uh, we'll fire five rounds, see how we go with a five-shot group. And then from there, we'll have a bit of fun with the rifle. Okay guys, so I'm pretty happy with the accuracy here. As you can see, we've got probably just about an inch uh, group there at 105 shots. The first shot was just up and uh, to the left a little. Then the um, second, third and fourth, I mean, look at that. That's about a quarter inch there, so that's great. Then the last one, I'm a bit disappointed with that. I think I pulled the shot a little there, but overall, I mean, you can see the accuracy of the rifle and the caliber in general, it, it, it is fairly good. So now that we've got that on paper, I know where it's shooting. Let's have a bit of fun. And as I always like to do, let's shoot some cans and potatoes. Okay, I'm just loading up four rounds here now, and I'm going to manually cycle them. It's just to show you an issue that I'm having with the rifle. When you actually load the magazine in the rifle, okay, move forward. Okay, see there, the first round, it jams. Okay, now I, I'm pushing as hard as I can on that bolt, and it's not closing it. Okay, so all you do is you pull it back and then move it forward, and then it's fine. But obviously that shouldn't be happening. Okay, so manually cycle the second round. Okay, see it's done it again. Okay, and you've, there, and a bit more of a push than it actually went in there. I'll try the third. Okay, not working, come back forward. And the fourth. Okay, bit of a wiggle and it went in. Okay, so look, this shouldn't be happening. What I've found is um, it's a little bit better now than what it was when I first started shooting the rifle to sight it in today. What I've found is I put a bit of G96 on it and it seems to well, smooth it up quite considerably. Another thing is too, on the actual magazine, it's not smooth when you're actually loading it. See how that plastic is, is very rough when you're pushing down there? Sometimes it goes down smoothly, other times it, it like catches. So that may have something to do with the actual um, round coming out of the magazine. So I've put a bit of G96 on it and throughout like obviously shooting I had no problems that cleared it up but I've noticed as I'm taking a few more shots now that I'm actually having a few issues with it again so I'm going to have to put some more G96 on it. So look, I don't know what's causing that guys. If I find out any more I'll let you know. But it's just something, like you know I call it the way it is and it's something that everyone should be aware of. This is exactly how it is and this is the issue I'm having with it. Okay guys, so I'll wrap up with my final thoughts on the Savage and 1.7 Hornet. Rifle is actually very accurate. I was surprised with the accuracy that I was getting there at 100, especially when I'm on this camp bench. I know I keep saying it, but it's all I've got at the moment when I'm actually doing any sort of bench work, rather than having to you know, travel some distance to get to a range. 
So uh, look, it's very accurate. I'd actually like to get it off a more solid bench. I'm quite confident that I could easily shoot half, if not quarter inch groups there at uh, 100 yards. A lot of punch in this little 1.7 Hornet round in general. It reminds me of the 1.7 Remington. If any of you remember them years ago, they were very popular Fox cartridge. So this would be ideal for foxes or really long distance, uh, you know, varmint shooting like rabbits and so forth. So just a, a lot, a lot of punch in this little cartridge. The only uh, thing that I find negative about the cartridge in general is just the price. That's it. I mean, it's an absolute superb cartridge, but the problem is it's about $1.20 a, a shot. So uh, I'd have to definitely get into reloading if I was going to look at long term with the 1.7 uh, Hornet. Apart from that, on the functionality of the rifle, I can't really see many issues there. It's only with that bolt with a bit of the feeding and reliability there. However, I put a bit more G96 on that and it seemed to smooth it up just nicely. So if you do get one of these, just make sure that the action is well lubed and give it some time just to uh, run it in. Don't expect it to perform flawlessly on the first few rounds. Anyhow guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the review. So as always, take care and we'll catch you next time.